Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today I'm going to be using the You Bake Me Happy, the Fancy Frosting, and what is the name of the sentiments? Stand by. Oh, they're You Bake Me Happy too. Um, <laughs> so that's pretty easy. Um, so the Fancy Frosting has been sitting on my desk pretty much since it came out, just waiting for me to use it. And as I've told you guys in my recent uh, videos that I am out of birthday cards. So it was a good set for me to use. Plus I'm a scene builder. Y'all know that. Um, something to note. So as you can see, I am using different ink. It is intense black and it is from Honeybee. Uh, it is totally alcohol, um, safer alcohol ink markers. And uh, this is my first time using it. I super love it. And it will probably be part of my regular rotation. So... Normally, when I do my scene cards, <laughs> I do a lot of stamping and masking because I love a one-layer card, uh, but this time I decided to do the dies because sometimes, like, sometimes I'm just not feeling all the little fussy cuttings, uh, <laughs> and I'm sure you guys can relate because um, fussy cutting is time-consuming, and in order to do one-layer cards, you have to do the masks. So I thought that I would use the dies this time around. Um, the scene's still just as cute as it would be before. It just isn't completely flat, but since we all know that I don't mail my cards ever, because <laughs> I'm terrible at that, um, and I hand deliver them, it's not really a thing for me. So I have all my stamping done and out of the way. I'm going to move into the coloring. I, When I was visioning my scene, I really loved the little um, accessories, little accoutrements that come with the You Bake Me Happy set, um, like the little bowls and spatulas and... Um, all of that. Uh, so I wanted to include those. I thought that that would be fun, but I really needed something that was going to be a little bit taller. And since I had the fancy frosting <laughs> set on my desk forever, I was like, oh, this cake will be perfect. It doesn't need to be anything super fancy and you can color it however you want. I opted to go for more of like a white cake chocolate frosting um, situation. So I used E50, E53, and E55 for my cake um, and then for the frosting I used the E20 family because literally I think it's E25 is it 25 is it 27 E27 is called milk chocolate so like that was perfect for me to color chocolate frosting most of this shading that you're seeing here you will not even see once I put the frosting on it why am I doing it you ask so if you at home are coloring a cake and you want to know how to shade it without the frosting, I wanted to be able to show you that. So this is how I would shade it um, so that it looks a little bit more dimensional. Once you get the frosting on it, um, it looks way more three-dimensional. And that's assisted by the dyes, which we'll talk about when we get there. So I'm using the same kind of like light wood look for my wooden spoon um there is no other way for me to color this any other way like <laughs> it's a wooden spoon that's what I see when I see it I couldn't color it any other color I realize that like in today's day and age with all of the things they come in all different colors but I that it, I just see it as a wooden spoon it, it has to be wooden in my head um <laughs> and then I picked my color scheme um, based on the spatula because I have a spatula um, that is teal so it's like the light wood color and then it's the teal like rubber spatula and that's just what I kept envisioning in my head plus teal is like a good neutral color so I could use this card um, really for anybody that needed to give a birthday card to anywho um, so as far as story time goes while we're doing some coloring um, Somebody had asked in my previous video if I would tell the story about how I found out I was pregnant. We are at this point, um, what are we, 26 weeks, 26 weeks, so just past the six month mark. Um, and so I will happily tell the story about <laughs> how I found out I was pregnant. Um, so when we got married and even before that like we had lots of conversations about having more children and w the way that we wanted to go about doing that um i still very much have a heart for adoption 
but in conversation we decided that we wanted to try um to have our own biological child um and then maybe revisit adoption later on so from pretty much from the word go uh like from the night of our wedding we were not actively trying but not preventing that was our approach to it like if god wanted us to have another kid then we would if not then we wouldn't and then we would talk about different avenues so i found out doo -doo 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 -doo, in february it would have been like right at the end of february um and i had already been like kind of tracking my situation because of my allergies and the reason that I was doing that is because it seemed to me that my nose would run uncontrollably um, more around like that particular time of the month. So I had already been tracking it. And so I knew that I was late. <laughs> I knew I was late. Um, so one day while Eric was at work, I think I was like, I think I waited like a week um, because they say that you shouldn't take the over-the-counter ones too early. Um, so I went to the store, bought a pregnancy test, came home, took the test, and it was immediately positive. Um, of which I was super excited, but now I have to wait. <laughs> like, super excited, but now I can't tell, I can't tell anybody because he's at work and he has to be the first person that I tell, obviously. Um, so in the meantime... I decided that I was going, like, trying to find a super cute way to tell him, you know, that we were um, going to be parents again. Um, I went to Target and I bought, um, which was really hard to find, by the way, just a plain white onesie. And I had no idea why they were so challenging. Um, because I feel like when Nathan was a baby, like, I had a bunch of, like, white little undershirt onesies. But anyway, um, so I finally find what I'm looking for. I went to, did I go to Hobby Lobby? I think I went to Hobby Lobby and bought like the iron on um, vinyl. And then on my Cricut, I cut out a, like resized it and everything. Um, I cut out like a little silver badge. And then in navy blue, I, um, what did it say? Hold on. I think it said cops make the cutest babies is what it ended up the one I finally settled on um and so I did that the iron on I hadn't <laughs> I hadn't really used before and um it was like super challenging for me to get it on there like to get enough pressure that it was sticking um I have no idea why because I also made at the same time um I made peanut a t-shirt that was gray um, with the same, like, kind of navy blue, um, that said, it was navy blue and white, the writing was, and it said promoted to Big Brother, because I thought that it would be really cute to give him something, you know, when we told him that he was going to have a sibling. So, I got done with the onesie, I put it in a little gift box, and then I pretty much just sat and waited, <laughs> just sat and waited for Eric to get home from work, um, so then when he came in the door, put his stuff down, like we were talking or whatever. And I was like, I have something for you. And so I gave him the little box and, um, he was, I think kind of like stunned at first. And like later on, he told me, he was like, I knew what was in, like, I knew that's what the box was for. Like, I knew that's why you were giving me the box. Like, not that he knew that the onesie was in it, but that we were pregnant. And, um, he was like, it's still just like, <laughs> I'm still just processing, and then all night for like the rest of the night. Now, mind you, he doesn't come home from work like that particular night. He didn't get home from work until much later. Um, it would just be like random, random comments that like, <laughs> like we were laying there trying to fall asleep and he was like, you know, we're going to have to get a 529 like for their college. We're going to, we're going to have to get furniture. What are we going to do for this? And I was like, what, like dude, <laughs> your, your brain is on like overdrive. Like just calm down. Like we got a long, we got a long way to figure all this stuff out. So he was super cute about it. Very, very excited. Um, and then that particular night, uh, peanut was not home. He was with his father. And, um, so then when he came home, um, we gave him his little 
box, his little t-shirt to open up. And his immediate reaction was a little bit of confusion. Like he didn't really understand what was happening. And then once he did understand what was happening, he was like, no, I don't want it. I don't take it back. I don't want it. And I was like, you don't want to be a big brother? And I think he just didn't know how to feel about it. Um, But that lasted for just a very short period of time. And then he had lots of questions about the baby, if the baby would be a boy or a girl, uh, you know, just how long till the baby gets here. Like, and so now he is very excited. Um, And then, I don't know, it was, I can't even remember when it was. It was just a couple of months. It Like when the weather first got nice. So it must have been just a couple of months afterward. Because um, like I said, when we found out it was still winter, um, he was outside playing with his friends uh, who are quadruplets. And God bless that mother. Ooh, special place in heaven for you. Um, all boys, quadruplets, all boys. And um, he was saying that um, he had a little, he goes, I have a little, uh, I have a little brother. And they were like, oh, very sweetly, can he come out to play? And he was like, no, he's still in my mommy's belly. So in my head, I was like, oh man, he's going to be devastated if this is a girl. But since then, he has told me that he believes that this baby is in fact a girl, Um, which we don't know because we're not going to find out until the baby is born. We're going to wait to be surprised. Um, But he has definitely (laughs) come around a little bit more to the idea of having a little sister, which makes me feel better. So like he will be happy if it's a boy, but then he won't be too terribly disappointed if it's a girl. Part of the other reason why we did the t-shirt was because then he had an opportunity to be a part of telling our parents um, that they were going to be grandparents again. So we had... It was right around Eric's birthday. So we had already made plans with his parents to come over for his birthday. Um, So we just asked Peanut, like, hey, do you want to wear your t-shirt? And then you can tell uh, Grandma T and Grandpa T, like, you know, you're going to be a big brother. And he was like, yeah, that's fine. So he was outside, like, playing when they showed up, called him in. And then when he came in, I said, do you want to go put on your t-shirt now? And he said, yes. So he came downstairs to greet them wearing his t-shirt. Obviously, Eric's parents are ecstatic. Um, Like, they love Nathan and they're very good to Nathan, but this is their first baby baby. Um, So extremely excited for that addition to the family. Um, Eric's mom cried, (laughs) which so did my mom because we had... So we had already, I think we've talked about this before... um, we're in like our family. We just kind of gather up everybody's birthdays that are close to each other and celebrate them all at the same time. Well, Eric's my mom's and then my sister's um, boyfriend, Jerry, are all at the like right around the same February, March-ish. Um, so we had already had plans to go over there. So we let everybody do their, my mother always goes last. It doesn't matter if it's Christmas, if it's a birthday, if it's whatever. She always, she's the last to open the gifts and you can't talk her out of it. Uh, she will never be the first person to open the gifts. Um, so she is the last one. She opens up all her gifts. Um, and then I, you know, Nathan came walking over to me and he just had his little t-shirt on underneath, um, his other t-shirt and like all night long he kept asking me like is it time is it but is it time but but is it time and I was like no nobody like you have to wait till we do the gifts (laughs) it's not it's not time yet um (laughs) so then he came walking over to me we took off his shirt and I was like okay now go stand in front of Nana and um so it took her a minute to realize what the t-shirt said like what that meant Uh, And then she started crying. And then my dad, who's on the other side of the room, he was like, what is it? What is the, like, because he sees my my mom crying. And he was like, what's going on? Like, why is she crying? What, what is it? And so he goes like walking over to where my um, dad, because I was like, go show Papa. So he starts walking over where my dad is. And so then my brother-in-law sees it first and he was like, oh my gosh. And so finally my dad gets to read the shirt. And again, everybody super excited. Um... So that's kind of how we found out and then how we told the rest of our family members. Um, So now it's just really 
I went kind of back and forth about um, having a baby shower because I've already had one. Um, but I obviously, you know, he's eight. I don't have any of those items anymore. Um, and even the items that I did save, I didn't bring with me um, when I moved. So we're pretty much starting from scratch here. And everybody that I talked to was like, don't be silly. It was eight years ago. Like, there's no reason for you not to have a, like a little sprinkle. Um, plus, I'm not trying to like rob Eric's family of that. So let's talk about the card for a second. So in the dies here, there's two different sizes and one of them cuts the white outline and one of them does not for like the icing and the cake. So I used the ones that did not and they worked. I was so worried I was gonna have a hard time lining them up, but they worked phenomenally. Um, they just worked really, really well. So I used those and then all of the other, you know, like the dies for all of the other things, cut all those things out. Normally when I do a scene card, I usually do my background first. But this time I wasn't really sure what I was going to do. So I basically decided that I was going to do, like I was going to play up that teal color. It's really the only non-neutral. Uh, it's a very monochromatic card. So my original intention <laughs> was to put peacock feathers in the background. But let me just tell y'all that I have no idea where my peacock feathers has gone. I just used it to make those balloon cards the other day. And now it's gone. It's MIA. I, I don't know where it has disappeared too. But also my desk is a mess, so chances are it probably is in here somewhere and I can't find it. So I ended up going with Crack Pistachio, which is like a complementary color to the uh, peacock feathers anyway. It's just a little bit lighter. And then y'all know that I like a little bit of, little bit of bling, a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of something in the background. Um, so in order to kind of just like break that background up and then dress it up a little bit, um, I did some, just some clear water spatters on the background with my mask in place. PPS, that masking tape is the post-it note, um, masking, the two inch wide masking tape, which is what I typically use if I just need a straight line because it's so easy. And then I'm going to, um, spatter some perfect pearls in the background as well, you know, just for some sparkle and some interest and some, something going on back there. Um, if you don't like the sparkle and the something, something going on back there, um, to be so noticeable, you could certainly, um, do some like tone on tone stamping. That would be a good way to put some texture in the background. Um, and that would kind of look like wallpaper. Uh, yeah, so there's just, I mean, that's another option for you if you're into that, but you're not into the, the perfect pearls. And then I just used, um, hickory smoke a little bit on the bottom, um, kind of faded up to act as my countertop. I did not need to make this very involved because I have so many items that are going onto the front of the card. So once those are all, everything's been run through the die cut um, machine, my, my spellbinders, platinum, um, now I'm just going to start adhering them. I chose not to pop any of them up um, onto foam tape. I just kind of layered them on top of each other, which gave me some height anyway, uh, but mostly they were just glued flat. I did add foam tape, which you'll see when I do my sentiment. Um, but look at that frosting. Look how good that looks. Like there's no, like none of that little white outline. And then it looks so good. I just, I was super happy with the way that, that it came out. So <laughs> anyway, um, here I'm doing this little trick cause I want to tuck my wooden spoon into my bowl um, just so not everything is laying on the countertop. Uh, even though in my house, everything is laying on the countertop. I don't know how you bake, but I, Eric tells me all the time that he has no idea how I get all the things, all the places when I'm cooking. Um, but then I watch them cooking shows and they're like, I watched some dude take a knife to a thing of like cream and it was just everywhere. And I was like, how are you going to give me a hard time about my green beans on the stovetop? Like that guy just busted out a whole thing of like cream all over the counter. He doesn't care. Um, so I am a little bit messy, but I am not that messy. Um, but I'm just gonna, I just cut that with my, um, Tim Holtz little X-Acto knife thing, uh, so that I can fit the spoon inside. And then I am going to glue the underneath, like, so the spoon stays in place, um, and then glue all of that down flat. Just remember when you're placing your items that whatever is furthest back, like, 
if you want it to appear furthest back, you have to put the other items in front of it. So when you're putting your, like that bowl would fit back behind the cake stand, but I can't put it back there because it's in front of the cake stand. So if it's going to be in front and the top, then the bottoms have to be in front of one another. Um, and then I'm just going to keep layering them, the little piping bag. Uh, the old school piping bags, which I also have, are like a cream color. But I had so much cream going on in this card, like light browns and dark brown tones, that I opted for just a clear one, which is sometimes how mine look anyway, because I run out of, like, I don't want to clean them and I just want to throw them away. So I just use a Ziploc bag with my piping tip. Anyway, so once that is all layered up, I am going to move on to the sentiment part of it. Uh, there's a lot of really good sentiments in the, um, oh. <sighs> Not the, the, not the fancy frosting one. The other one. The you, you bake me happy. There's a lot of, is that the one I'm talking about? What am I talking about? Oh, it's called baked with love. Oh my word. I have just been calling this thing the wrong thing the entire video. I'm so sorry. The one with the accessories is baked with love. The sentiments are you bake me happy. Wow, Kelly. Get it together. So anyway, that one does come with like some really good sentiments. I used the you bake me happy um because i thought that this particular sentiment matched really well it says no one measures up to you and then it'll be super easy for me to just pop a happy birthday sentiment on the inside and it really could be used um for just anybody's birthday that i have coming up i did kind of toy around with using the candles in the um fancy frosting set on top of the cake but then I was worried it would be too tall but that is a really good option as well um, to just kind of like dress it up so once I have this all heat set which it did take me a while to clean it up I was having a really hard time with it I went ahead and used the coordinating die to cut that out and then just popped it up on some foam tape and put it right over my cake uh, so that it's nice and everything is even and balanced and you know your eye has somewhere to circle around the card i did add a little bit of a clear glitter pen to the frosting and then the frosting that was in the piping bag um and then i'm just going to do a couple of white highlights that are right on the cake um just to kind of like highlight that um that the light would be hitting it and then I'm going to do the same thing with the um, the bag so that you can tell like the contents are inside and there is a shine on the bag part of it. And then that's pretty much it. That's the entire card. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that you learned a little something and you found yourself inspired and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.